Japan is the largest development partner of Bangladesh. Since independence, it has provided about $27 billion as loan and grants to Bangladesh. Currently, it is supporting some of the mega projects in Bangladesh. Example, uh, Matarbari Deep Seaport, uh, Arai Hazar Special Economic Zone, uh, Metro Rail, things like that. Uh, the two countries are also eager to take the relationship to a strategic level. We'll discuss all these uh, with our ambassador, uh, Japanese ambassador, Mr. Uh, Ito Naoki. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank you so much. Ambassador, uh, we know that uh, our prime minister will be visiting Japan soon. And we all said, Japan and Bangladesh, we said that we want to take our relationship to a strategic level. What does actually it mean? So we will work towards the uh, realization of early visit by Honorable Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Hashina. So it is going to be very, very important uh, visit to develop our partnership further. So when Honorable Prime Minister came to Tokyo in May 2014, so two leaders, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hashina and the late Shinzo Abe, then Prime Minister of Japan, uh, launched this comprehensive uh, partnership. So since then, uh, eight years have passed. So the relationship between the two countries developed and deepened. So in the areas of uh, the business partnership, the number of Japanese companies operating here, uh, investment, uh, trade uh, between the two countries, uh, all expanded. And even this uh, amount of ODA Japan is providing has been uh, increasing. So if you look at the figure, the commitment basis of Japanese yen loan, so now that exceeds uh, 3 billion uh, US dollars mark. So compared to 10 years ago, uh, the 10 times higher. Yeah. So our partnership, which new two leaders, two prime ministers going to shape, need to reflect on the development of those eight years uh, since the establishment of comprehensive uh, partnership. And also Bangladesh's stature in the region was enhanced I was struck by the fact that when you celebrated twin celebrations in March last year, Longobondu's birth centenary and 50 years of your independence, Dhaka was a center of regional diplomacy. It was Bangladesh, which took initiative of regional connectivity and free trade mm -hmm. among the countries in the region. Also, you offered uh, assistance to neighboring countries, Sri Lanka, uh, for economic management. Right. So clearly, Bangladesh is playing increasing role in the region. Mm -hmm. So Japan would like to support uh, such role uh, or the Bangladesh plays here. So uh, development partnership, Bangladesh stature, mm -hmm. also in light of this uh, changing uh, uh, strategic landscape, we need to step up our cooperation in the area of security. Mm -hmm. So I think that is going to be the new uh, okay. sort of uh, meat of a partnership. Okay. So uh, I think uh, uh, we need to expand our exchange of officers, uh, you need to you need to call or training or even port calls by uh, self-defense forces ship or naval ships. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, January this year, two of the Japanese self-defense forces ships uh, pay the port call to Chittagong. Okay. That was the curtain raiser of 50th anniversary, and they did a uh, good exercise with the Bangladesh Navy. And also, now Bangladesh Air Force is showing strong interest in procuring a radar system, mobile radar system from a Japanese company. So uh, increasing interest is there because you need to diversify mm -hmm. the source of procurement of defense-related equipment. So already basis of cooperation there for security area, a defense area. So once we can elevate a partnership to a new height, I'm sure that we can do uh, this new type of cooperation, collaboration between the two countries. Okay. And we also know that Japan has a uh, policy which is called FOIP popularly, 
free, open in the Pacific. And would you please explain uh, its significance and also how you want to engage Bangladesh in that uh, policy? And what is Bangladesh ex actually responding to your uh, call? We regard Bangladesh as a partner uh, to FOIP when we uh, realize this free, open in the Pacific. Bangladesh is a partner uh, to Japan. So under this FOIP vision, we have three pillars. First one is shared values. Second one is the pursuit of economic prosperity. And third one is a cooperation on peace and stability in the region. So shared values, democracy, market economy, uh, respecting international law or, and uh, rule-based international order or maritime uh, freedom of navigation. So these are the values both Bangladesh and Japan uh, respect and try to promote and the pursuit of economic prosperity. No doubt any single country mm -hmm. wants to do this and cooperation on peace and stability in the region the situation is changing and uh, landscape of security strategies even more challenging right now. So there is good reason for us to cooperate, collaborate and security stability in the region, as I already explained. So all of those pillars, uh, we shared our ideas. So we can promote a pragmatic cooperation uh, to pursue and realize free, open, Indo-Pacific. The practical cooperation includes quality infrastructure building, mm -hmm. the regional connectivity, disaster management and prevention, the maritime safety, capacity building of uh, law enforcement uh, uh, officers, or even humanitarian assistance and uh, climate change. So uh, with this vision, uh, we will uh, even accelerate our cooperation uh, with uh, Bangladesh. And one thing I want to mention here is FOIP, Free Open Indo-Pacific, yeah. is uh, global commons. So uh, under FOIP, we don't exclude any country. This is an inclusive vision. This vision is not targeting any single country. This vision is not intended to contain any country. But important thing is, we all need to abide by the basic principles of international community, international law, uh, UN Charter, rule-based international order. So what are the challenges that you find uh, while implementing this policy? No, I think uh, important thing is uh, all countries will, uh, say, respect rule-based international order. Yeah. If any country uh, tries to, uh, say, challenge uh, the international uh, law or international rule-based international order, then we need to raise uh, our concern and we need to oppose uh, such uh, act of any uh, single uh, country. I think that would be the challenge for us. But I don't see any difficulty uh, for Bangladesh uh, to look at uh, this vision uh, from its own interest, from its own angle. So recently Bangladesh talks about uh, uh, free, open, inclusive, uh, peaceful, yeah. uh, prosperous Indo-Pacific on the basis of uh, international law uh, and uh, prosperity for all nations. Yeah. We share that idea completely. Maybe the number of adjectives is slightly larger <laughs> than what we say, the free open in the yeah. Pacific. But I think we share the vision there. So on that basis, uh, we are so pleased to extend our practical cooperation further to okay. Bangladesh. Uh, but one thing is like in this region, this uh, you know, Myanmar situation, uh, it is a junta in, in power and also this Rohingya crisis. So this region is quite volatile because of Myanmar and its actions. And we know that Japan is a very close you know, ally of Myanmar. So how do you actually advance this policy, keeping Myanmar as it is now, and the Rohingya, Rohingya crisis, uh, which is ongoing? So since February the 1st last year, uh, Myanmar's situation is very concerning. 
So uh, we take opportunities to send messages to Myanmar military junta uh, that, that they need to stop violence, they need to release those detained, they need to uh, restore a democratic process. I think those are essential uh, factors uh, Myanmar junta uh, need to work on and need to improve the situation. I think that's the first thing I would like to uh, stress uh, regarding the Myanmar uh, situation. And you mentioned the uh, Rohingya. Yeah. Rohingya population has been inside Bangladesh uh, for over six years now. So we commend what Bangladesh government did, open up the border and providing uh, shelters for those refugees. This is such a com commendable uh, effort. But unfortunately, the situation has been protracted. But we may need to say, look at the even longer uh, period of time uh, to see uh, this uh, crisis of refugees inside uh, Bangladesh. So first and foremost is to bring about enabling environment, enabling condition for repatriation to Myanmar. So the way uh, we send message to Myanmar uh, will be hopefully instrumental in bringing about the enabling condition of repatriation. But at the same time, we need to look at the situation of those Rohingya population inside Cook's Bazar camps, mm -hmm. as well as Bashanchal Island. So their condition needs to improve. They need to leave, lead purposeful lives. They need to be more resilient. They need to be equipped with themselves for uh, the, as a preparation for returning to uh, Myanmar. So education is important, skills development is important, livelihood opportunities are important. So international community, UN agency and Bangladesh uh, need continue to work together uh, for that purpose, knowing that the situation will be further protracted. So this is a very heavy burden on Bangladesh. So we understand the frustration shared by government officials, uh, politicians, and the people in the host communities uh, because of the long stay of Rohingya population. Uh, but Japan will do its best to provide uh, assistance to Bangladesh government as well as UN agencies to alleviate the burden of uh, Bangladesh people. But the important thing is we need to work together to improve the situation of Rohingya refugees, both Cook's Bazar camp and Bashanchal situation. Japan and Bangladesh are a, a very strong trade partner. You know, uh, currently the annual trade volume is uh, more than $3 billion. And by 2030, uh, you said in, in one uh, event that we want to take it to $20 billion. So how is that actually possible? And we also know that the two countries are going to sign an FTA. Would you please uh, explain? You know, the mainstay of Bangladesh export to Japan is, of course, textile, mm -hmm. RMG. Yeah. So that is around the one billion dollar mark. Right. But this fiscal year, it is focused. This could reach two billion US dollars. And BGM year president is uh, expectation is to increase RMG export from Bangladesh to Japan uh, to the level of 10 billion US dollars uh, by 2030. Okay. So that is their prediction and expectation. And like, as you said, that Arai Hajar Special Economic Zone will be coming. That will pull increasing foreign direct investments, not only from Japan, but also other foreign countries. But Japanese companies are looking at Arai Hajal SEZ, Bangladesh SEZ, BSEZ, as tremendous opportunities of making investment. I'm sure that uh, once there's an opening ceremony early December, increasing number of Japanese companies will show interest. At the moment, economic crisis is all over, a global basis. But once the situation improves, so then once we are getting out of this uh, tunnel of economic crisis, I'm sure that the Japanese companies will look at the Bangladesh as a frontier of uh, investment, 
So they will look at the supply chain uh, to be uh, built uh, in Bangladesh as part of the regional supply chain. So there is a very high potential for that. Then once increasing volume of investment comes from Japan, then there will be a positive cycle of trade and investment. So investment will uh, lead to expanded trade. Mm -hmm. And expanded trade will lead to further investment. I, I see a positive uh, cycle will be coming, uh, you know, the, not in the so distant future. Then this, if the export from here uh, goes to the level of 10 billion dollars, then the import from Japan could increase similarly. Mm -hmm. Then 10 billion, 10 billion, both okay. directions. Okay. That should come up with a 20 billion US dollar trade. So I think that is something we should uh, look at. We should aim high. So rather than to see just realistic scenario, mm -hmm. because our partnership has a big room uh, to develop. So we should be rather hopeful. We should be rather optimistic about the future of our economic partnership, business relations. But Arai Hazar provide wonderful opportunity on top of infrastructure building, Dhaka Metro, mm -hmm. airport terminal, yeah. uh, Matabari deep sea port, and this road building uh, between Cox Bazaar, Chittagong, as well as uh, new highway possibly between Dhaka and Chotogram. So mm -hmm. improvement infrastructure will give investors uh, confidence. So you are on the right track uh, for that. So December, there'll be opening of uh, this uh, Dhaka Metro Line 6. Yeah. And line 1 will start its construction sometime early part of next year. Line 5 North, uh, also, there will be start of work sometime, uh, most likely in the middle of next year. Okay. And October next year, we plan to have soft opening of new Terminal 3 of uh, your international airport. Yeah. So, you know, throughout yeah. the year, you can see the changing phases of infrastructure of the country. Mm -hmm. That will be an enormous uh, pulling okay. element for foreign direct impacts. What are the what are the other regulatory uh, things or elements that you would expect to improve? Of course, it is impo important that uh, Japan and Bangladesh should work together to improve the regulatory aspect, to uh, improve the ease of doing business here in Bangladesh. But even during Corona uh, pandemic period, the Bangladesh government worked so hard to improve the regulatory aspect. Uh, they did the regulatory reform, say they relaxed the rules on this uh, parent company's loan to subsidiary sale, operational uh, budget. Also, they relaxed this regulation on the registration fee for motorbikes. Then the disposal of uh, unused machine or old vehicles kept inside the export processing zone. The rule was relaxed. Now you allow a dual use of container between port and EPZ. So we have seen uh, lots of uh, uh, positive uh, development in terms of uh, regulation, but still we have some miles to go. Okay. Say remittance, taxation, uh, customs uh, clearance, all this uh, discrimination of uh, cash incentives available between uh, domestic companies and foreign companies. So, uh, yes, we have listed items, uh, which uh, we hope your government will continue to work on. But in light of the track record of improvement of mm -hmm. regulatory aspects over the last two years, again, I'm hopeful that you are going to provide even better business environment, investment climate, mm -hmm. uh, which would solve some of those issues with Japanese companies, which have already in operation here in Bangladesh. Uh, would find it uh, uh, even more facilitated uh, in terms of a business environment. In the upcoming visit uh, of Prime Minister, uh, there will be a number of MOUs to be signed and both the countries are working on those. Can you shed light on some of the important MOUs? So we'll work towards the early uh, visit of Honorable Prime Minister mm -hmm. Sheikh Hashina. Uh, we haven't uh, come up with a date yet. So uh, naturally, uh, once the date is uh, fixed, uh, we'll work uh, on the, what sort of uh, MOUs we can sign. 
So I'm not in a position to say uh, which areas we are going to conclude MOU uh, as of now. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we discussed earlier, so security cooperation mm -hmm. is a very uh, important uh, new area okay. uh, which both sides are uh, uh, eager to look at. Also, uh, you know, the, the Bangladesh is a country of agriculture in a way. Agriculture is leading the economic development. Mm -hmm. But now you're keen to do mechanization of agriculture right. production. So there are some leading companies, agriculture machinery in mm -hmm. uh, Japan. Okay. So uh, the cooperation in agriculture, particularly agriculture mechanization, could be another new area which uh, we may be able to promote. And also uh, in related to this security area, mm -hmm. say cyber security or even ITC collaboration. I think those are very important uh, uh, new areas uh, which Japan and Bangladesh uh, should uh, explore the possibility of further uh, collaboration and cooperation. We know that uh, Japan has a uh, big B uh, you know, initiative in this region. What are the new things that are coming up? Because we also heard that uh, in Matarbari, you canceled a coal fire power project and you will, you're planning to have a new one with alternative energy. What is the uh, progress? No, we are now working on this unit one and unit two of coal fire the power plant in Matabari. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for this project, uh, we constructed the deep sea port. Mm -hmm. So, there is a 300 meter long uh, jetty already being in place and used for the construction uh, of this coal fired power plant. So, Matabari needs to develop further. Matabari uh, needs to be a full fledged uh, deep sea port, mm -hmm. say 10 years from now. Matabari deep sea port needs to function as a port of container handling as well. So in the future, the plan is that Matabari is uh, capacity to handle container is equivalent to uh, what uh, Chittagong port can offer. So it's a long plan, long mm -hmm. project, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to make a steady uh, development implementation of the project. So we may need to come up with a new master plan for uh, Matabari uh, development, MIDI development. Uh, you may need to set up a new uh, uh, bureaucratic organization like uh, MIDI agency. But important thing is, uh, because this is the flagship project, this is a game changer for the development of Bangladesh. Also for the prosperity of entire Indo-Pacific region, uh, beyond Bay of Bengal region, because Matabari uh, will have uh, regional connectivity. Matabari will be the hub of industry, hub of uh, energy. So it has uh, really wide potentials. So important thing is we project our resources into MIDI, Matabari uh, development. Mm -hmm. So uh, further collaboration, cooperation are required between Bangladesh side and Japanese side. Also, prioritization of project will be necessary on the part of Bangladesh government, ministries and uh, related agencies. Uh, but as we advance further study and master plan formulation, we will know the actual impact of Matabari uh, port, deep sea port development on the national economy or even uh, GDP. So uh, with that uh, clear vision, of Matabari deep sea port development. I think we are, we will be in a position to focus more and uh, you know, provide more resources into Matabari port development. Because this is a key uh, of a big B initiative, Bay of Bengal Industrial Growth Belt. Well, we are doing uh, connectivity, we are doing infrastructure development mm -hmm. along this uh, corridor. But the vital project is Matabari deep sea port okay. project. We need to accelerate this. Ambassador, uh, now that uh, this Russia-Ukraine war is actually affecting all the countries in the world and uh, being a small country, uh, Bangladesh is also being affected. Mm. I mean, in terms of uh, foreign reserve and uh, fuel price hike, mm. all this. Mm. So 
can Japan uh, come up with an in innovative idea which can help Bangladesh you know, tackle this crisis? Every country is now struggling in mm. terms of economy. This is a global crisis mm. after the aggression of Russia over uh, Ukraine. So peace process needs to be uh, in place uh, sooner rather than later. Bangladesh had a really a good uh, step forward, that is agreement with uh, IMF mm. regarding 4.5 billion US dollars assistance package. I si si sincerely hope that uh, you'll make a good progress uh, so that the Bang uh, IMF will provide uh, assistance in a phased manner as agreed upon between the two sides. So Bangladesh requested Japan uh, to provide uh, budget support in light of the economic crisis now Bangladesh faces. So Japan provided budget support for the first time to Bangladesh uh, back in 2020. In the last year, 2021, we also provided uh, budget support. So this year, uh, since you requested uh, this uh, third conse consecutive uh, budget support, uh, we are considering the possibility we have not decided yet the scale of budget assistance this time around and timing of assistance. But uh, Tokyo, uh, people in Tokyo are now considering this possibility. You have been in Bangladesh for uh, more than three years uh, and uh, people loved you. Uh, you worked so hard with uh, Bangladeshi authorities to improve the relationship. What are your observations about all these activities and the relationship that has really been elevated to this level uh, before you, you know, leave Dhaka? I don't know whether I was able to elevate the relationship uh, at a higher level, but I genuinely enjoyed my job as ambassador of Japan to Bangladesh. This was challenging, but very rewarding uh, assignment. I can't think of any better place to serve as ambassador of Japan. So to me, uh, Bangladesh is the best uh, place to serve as ambassador of Japan. So people are so friendly and very hospitable. And this, uh, the fondness of Bangladesh people towards Japan is just uh, beyond uh, description. We are so pleased. So we have an advantage because of the affinity between the two peoples, uh, time-tested friendship between the two countries, uh, work really well for all of us uh, between the two countries. So on this basis, mm -hmm. uh, I think I did my best to uh, even uh, improve. If you name one area where Bangladesh really needs to focus, what would you say? You know, Bangladesh is graduating from uh, LDC status mm -hmm. uh, in 2026. Uh, so there'll be uh, possibilities as well as opportunities, as well as uh, challenges. So I'm sure that Bangladesh will be capable of coping with those uh, challenges. Uh, but you need to, say, uh, diversify your industry. You need to do structural reform of your economy to cope with a new situation. So beyond LDC, you may uh, face with competition with uh, neighboring countries, not only in this region, but also in ASEAN region and beyond. Mm -hmm. Then I think uh, you should be more aggressive okay. in attracting uh, foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. And you should be uh, more, uh, I think, eager to provide incentives for, for you know, those prospective um, uh, the investors. investors. And FTA may be a very important instrument, free trade agreement mm -hmm. or even economic partnership agreement with uh, major trading in countries, including Japan. So mm -hmm. I think that will uh, provide more economic in interdependence with uh, trading partners and Bangladesh economy will be uh, integrated into the supply chain with trading partner. If you have FTA EPA with Japan, that could be a great step towards your accession to RCEP because that will provide a regional market opportunity, supply chain opportunity integration for Bangladesh. So I think that is a very important part. Okay. Also, it's rather hesitant, I'm rather hesitant to say this, but 
you know, the some cultural aspect like uh, grafting culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even time management. Mm -hmm. So these may also the things that you need to look at as you graduate uh, mm -hmm. and as you are, say, embarking upon this yeah. uh, rough ride of the ocean. Yeah. You know that Bangladesh is a country of uh, 170 million uh, people and a lot of people actually go abroad for jobs uh, because they badly need that. And Japan has started, uh, you know, Japan included Bangladesh as a labor sending country a few years back. But so far we know that it has not progressed. What are the challenges and how Bangladeshis can avail that opportunity? Japan and Bangladesh concluded the Memorandum of Cooperation in August 2019. Yeah. And as far as I'm aware, under uh, this uh, scheme of specified skilled worker, only one Bangladesh national was uh, sent to Japan. Mm -hmm. He's working in a hospital in Kagawa prefecture mm -hmm. as caregiver. So certainly I hope and expect that increasing number of uh, Bangladesh workers will go to Japan. So in uh, such areas as uh, caregiving or construction, or agriculture. So uh, we need to uh, make uh, efforts further, we need to cooperate further. But probably Bangladesh sites need to do more skills training, uh, catering for the needs of the Japanese market, the Japanese language uh, training, uh, you know, just uh, you know the beginner's level. Mm -hmm. That is also very important. And also matching of needs, the supply and demands, mm -hmm. Uh, you need to do in a very systematic way. And I, need, I know that the Japanese government is uh, providing opportunities of matching mm -hmm. uh, in Japan, as well as a job fair through online okay. uh, later in the year and also early part of next year, around February. Okay. So Bangladesh is one of the 11 countries mm -hmm. uh, which will be given this sort of opportunity. Okay. So once the economic situation improves, I'm sure that uh, there will be an increasing number of people, the Bangladeshi young people who are eager to go to Japan, that we need to provide uh, a framework. So one of the framework we need to provide is the, uh, to make examination available uh, in Dhaka. Okay. So, so far, the Japanese side has yet to conduct the examination of okay. SSW, specified uh, skilled uh, worker mm -hmm. uh, in Dhaka yet. So this one young man who is now working as caregiver in Kagawa took exam in Manila. He passed the exam, conducted in Manila, oh. then he went to Japan. Oh. So uh, Japanese side need to conduct uh, this exam uh, in Dhaka. Oh. How soon we, c we can do, we don't know yet, but uh, people are working uh, on this possibility okay. and hopefully starting from uh, caregiving sector we will be able to start uh, a test to be conducted in Dhaka. And the last question uh, for you is, as you leave Dhaka by December this year, what is the sweetest memory that you will carry home? It's a very difficult question to find the right answer because I have so many nice, <laughs> sweet memories over the last uh, three years, you know. So the Bengali hospitality, so, you know, dinner party at the house of friends. Mm -hmm. I ask many friends, where is the best Bengali restaurant in Dhaka? Mm -hmm. All of them answered, my home. <laughs> you should come to my home. But I certainly enjoyed hospitality by Bengali friends. Although I found sometimes the Bengali hospitality is a little bit imposing, but I think that's part of the beauty of Bengali hospitality and, and Bengali culture. And also I enjoyed a bit of culture, Tagore music, Tagore songs, and because uh, I have learned a bit of Tagore songs, okay. uh, the, which provided me uh, good opportunities of interacting with uh, uh, people here, friends, local people, that has widened the perspective of myself on this country. But I have so many nice memories, visiting various places, uh, even outside Dhaka, like Shundurbon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nilfamali, or Bharapur, or Kumila, or Siret, or Koksbazal, or Chotogram, mm -hmm. wherever I go.
I just enjoy the visit. So I hope that uh, you will be an ambassador not only of Japan, but also of Bangladesh. Thank you, Ambassador, so much for Thank your you so time. much. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.